Hello everyone, my name is Guilherme and welcome to another Game Engine Devlog or Showcase or whatever video. And guess what is missing in this engine? So we are reaching a point where all the core functionalities are here. We do have a bunch of audio stuff. I'm very happy with this audio library. I actually might as well uh, use this audio library in Cave because I really like this. And Cave Engine has some problems with audio so i might as well use this but i'm happy with the map library in the system and the graphics of course so we are doing great here so what is next well physics and i want to discuss a little bit about physics in this video and maybe do like a two-part video uh, the first one will be us talking about all the features and everything that you want to add when it comes to physics and the other part would be the actual thing done hopefully right and I'm planning to do it myself, do it, do the physics myself for this engine because, well, there's some problems when it comes to use a third party uh, library for physics. And the main problem is the third party library does not know about your structures, your asset data, how you structure everything, right? But what this means is usually what they require you to do is to convert your object data into their, their object data, like Bullet does have the their own mesh stuff and rich buddies and stuff. Bullet physics is an example because I use this in, in Cave. But it usually requires you to do that, to convert into a custom data. And then you need to be going back and forth between those two datas, like sending the data to the physics engine to calculate the physics and then getting the data back. This works and many games and engines and stuff do that. If you work with an engine that, uh, with a game engine that does have an NVIDIA PhysX or Bullet Physics, they all do this. So it's good, it's not a problem, but I don't like it. <laughs> I prefer to have a single data and the physics accessing and doing stuff directly with this data. But of course, in order to do that, of course, it's good. There's some advantages. The main one is the memory usage that will be way less. And of course, it may uh, help with performance if you do everything right. So there's these two main advantages. But the other thing that I'll that makes me think about not use a third party physics library is well for this engine for this library i kind of want to make something very simple i don't want to make like some fancy 2d physics i don't want to make like fancy stuff lying around with uh, forces and reached buddies with that can rotate and stuff like that so for example this let's say that this uh objects here those barrels were circles were spheres um an advanced physics will make this fall, but they will also rotate around when they fall. Uh, and assuming this is a static mesh, right? Um, so this is an advanced physics behavior. And I don't plan to, to do any of that. Uh, if you want to use the engine and do that uh, to a custom game, you can. But I'm not sure if I want to do this natively like i i prefer to leave it for yourself and as a framework i plan to to handle collision detection which is like hey given two objects like this one and this one do they collide do they actually collide or there's a gap in the middle uh this is the collision detection and some basic collision resolution what i mean basic is if this object uh, right here is dynamic and this object right here is static and they collide, let's say they're colliding, resolving this, colli uh, this, uh, this collision is basically moving the dynamic object to a place where it no longer collides with that. So this is a very basic collision resolution. And this is probably what I want for this engine. I don't want to make anything super complicated or anything like that. Uh, that's why I'm not sure if I will use a, an existing engine. Um, as some options, I was Googling here some options for um, an existing physics engines because we do have a lot, especially for 2D. And again, see that I'm biased here because I want to add their only physics uh, engine. So, yeah, but the first one, it's not here, but it's something that I need to mention because someone will mention is Box2D because this engine is a very famous physics engine for 2D stuff. I believe there are a bunch of games made using it. 
not sure, but uh, it is definitely a good engine for 2D. There's a good documentation and yes, it's a good option. It's a good choice that will get me everything. Not sure if I want to use this one. So let's move to the other one. And I found this one, Physics 2D from Seafoof. I don't know how to pronounce that. And it seems to be a simple one too, but a very powerful one. So we can see hundreds or thousands of uh, rich bodies all moving and then this sphere here that he's dragging with the mouse is colliding and affecting this so yes this is a very complicated situation this again is another complicated situation and this one here with some forces so yeah it's definitely a nice option and then i found this one this one requires raylib so that's a no-go to me because i'm not i'm trying to rely as few as possible into other libraries so this is probably it, it is probably a very good uh, engine especially if you are using Rayleigh but, but for me uh, I don't think so <laughs> so yeah it's complicated but I really believe that we should make our own physics based on what I said so let's start this so this is why I said that this video will be different I will actually start writing some code here so let me add a physics folder and I'm also adding uh, the same folder in the implementation. And the physics, the first thing that comes to my mind when it comes to a physics agent is a line axis bounding box. So AABB. Uh, what is an align axis bounding box? Well, let me just type a guard here. Actually, I believe it's X is a line. I believe it's this or it's the other way around. I don't know. English is complicated. Uh, anyways, I believe it's this one. Uh, what is this? Well, it is basically a rectangle that does not contain any rotation information. And the reason why this is very useful when it comes to physics is because it is, it is one of the easiest uh, things to calculate collision between two of them. So if I create a class AABB, um, I need to include my vector 2 and probably the transform. And probably I want to include the, the mesh too, and you will see why in a moment okay so i need to create some constructors here and an aabb is composed by two positions the position mean and the position max and of course let's store this as well oops if i can type and this is the this will be the default way to construct that let me actually initialize this with i don't know minus one and one i like having default constructors that's why i'm setting a default value to this this, this is just how i like this stuff we need a copy constructor too and we also need other ways to create this for example using a transform or also using a mesh or last but not least using both a mesh and a transform because maybe we want to create like a, an AABB from the tile map. And if you remember, the tile map does have a mesh. But the tile map, you're probably going to be handed somewhere in the world. So it also have a transform. That way we need to consider both uh, of them. So yeah, this is basically it. Um, all right, so these are the constructors that I feel like adding to this and then of course the most important part i'm not going to implement any of that in this video so don't worry about that i'm just explaining the idea behind everything but what is important is that i have this collide function that returns a boolean with true if this aabb collides with another a another aabb and it is very simple because they are axis aligned again so uh, if I have one AABB like that, so this is an axis align bounding box. You can see there's no rotation. This is not an AABB because it's a rectangle with a rotation. But we can extract an AABB from this like that. So this is an AABB. Um, and then we can check if these two collide by simply checking the mean and max. So it's a very simple and trivial uh, operation to calculate and it's fine. Okay. All right. Um, what's next? Maybe I want to see if an ABB collides with a transform. This is interesting because then later on we can do transform versus transform collisions, which is not very trivial. And you will see why. Actually, it is trivial and it involves two ABB checks. So yeah, we can have this, right? Then I can check to see uh, maybe, I'm not sure if I add this, the physics. 
Let me actually create the ABB here. I'm not implementing, but I just like to have this created. Oh, feels correct. Uh, anyways, maybe I need to have collision. Collision. A. And I'm not sure if I should create a namespace for the physics. I'm not sure. Because I don't like having functions with like outside. This is just me. Um, But I'm not sure. What I want to do, anyways, is first to include the physics ABB and then to include the math dot transform because i want to see if two transforms collide but maybe 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 uh, i was thinking about having this collide inside the the transform class itself what i'm not what i don't like about this approach is that then the transform the math stuff will start having physics stuff and i don't like this i think i prefer to have it as functions as separate functions and it will be more organized this way you know and this is just me right um so yeah something that maybe i want so i want to have abb versus abb abb versus transform maybe i want to have an abb versus a radius there versus a, a sphere let's do this back to here pose float radius maybe i want to do this right and maybe in the collisions here i want to check if a transform collides with a sphere like that and maybe i want to check if a sphere collides with another sphere hmm? so i want to do this check sphere versus sphere transform versus sphere transform versus transform now i'm feeling bad to have those collisions here inside and maybe i should just make the abb a plain old data it may be better right not have all those constructors constructors uh, whatever I if it's fine to have them here yeah, yeah. It's fine. <laughs> so yes, we have all that. And last but not least, I want to have some sort of mesh collision. Not mesh versus mesh. This is not what I want. But I want to have... Uh, let me include this, actually. Mesh versus transform. This is good. I also want to have mesh versus uh, ABB. It's good, too. Um, and also versus sphere. Feels good to have this. Feels correct have mesh versus sphere yeah so yeah i think that covers most of it most of the cases that i'm plan that i plan to add because i'm planning to make to only allow like so an object with physics like with a rigid body that moves around a dynamic object to have either like a sphere collider or a transform collider that is basically an, an abb right so this is my idea and this is probably why i'm doing this collisions Right. Man, I'm not happy with this. I'm not happy at all with this collide here. You know what? Whatever. I just do this. Let me know in the comments if you like this or not. But I'm slowly moving against object-oriented programming. So yeah. Yeah, that's good. So now we have all those functions and it will work. And then internally here in this AABB, I can implement this by simply calling them or vice versa. But this is probably going to be the first step, what I need to do or not. Um, I also need to, to do, to calculate like collision resolution, which is something important. Um, so I might in the future here, change this to like a struct collision resolution with a bull hit and then a vec to a uh, point back to normal to see like where do i need to move in order to recover from this collision or something like that and then load penetration which is how much one object is inside the other because then with the normal end of penetration i can do some math to uh to resolve this collision so at some point, I might as well change all the outputs from this, only the, the hit to all this data because it's it's good. Um, anyways, so this is the initial idea that I have. Let's see if I can implement this. And of course, I want to implement all that in this video, but I will I'll be back in the next video and it will be finished. But that's my basic idea for the physics engine, like basically physics colli uh, collision detection and basic resolution. So that's it for this video, folks. Hope you enjoy. And if you have any comments or suggestions, leave in the comments. And I see you in the next video. Bye.